Hey y'all, it's me. I'm gonna show you what's going on in the garden and because we're getting ready to start planting the tomatoes and sunflowers and I've got a, a bunch of things on the front porch that have to be um, hardened off and then they'll be going into the garden this coming week. But tonight we're expecting rain. So I want the tomatoes and the sunflowers in here before that happens because the garden's pretty dry. Let me take you through. All right. Hugh weeded it for me this morning, which means he threw a whole lot of weeds over into my little flower beds and on my veggies. So I'm going to go through in a few minutes after I get these others done and dust them off and try to get some of the the excess of the weeds out. I guess it'll hurt as long as I get them off of the plants themselves because they don't like to have they don't like to have stuff on them. But I'll real quickly sh walk through and see let you see what's going on now. That uh, spinach needs to be used. I will probably pull that or pick some of that for supper tonight. These flowers I still haven't remembered what they are. I'll have to look and see. The dill is looking fabulous. Big, big, big dill. And the broccolis. I need to start uh, getting some of these broccolis in. And this is what they're supposed to look like. This is not the bunch broccoli. This is either Yodfa or Rapini. And if you remember last week, I, I cut down the other one because it was bitter. So this week, we're going to give a try to these and they're supposed it's a Chinese um, broccoli and it's supposed to taste something like a cross between um, an asparagus and a broccoli my concern is that these plants take up a whole lot of room for no more vegetables than you get out of them and so I'm not sure if they come again. Once you cut them, that's all something that I'll find out. Maybe some of you will know and you can let me know. But if this is, if it's a one and done type thing, I'll not ever do this again. I am going to plant um, broccoli this fall simply because I have read that broccoli, I've never been real successful planting head broccoli in the spring. So I'll plant it this fall. And see if we have better success because I do like to have broccoli in the freezer all right and then on down here is the colorful beets and they're looking good the beet greens I'll tell you a funny story uh, years ago when we still lived in Canton and Jared and Emma when they first came out of when Jared first came out of the military they moved in our downstairs apartment and Jared, even back then, he loved farming and had it in his little blood. So he had all kinds of things planted in the little garden just outside their back door. Well, Emma loved salads. And so she and I had been going out there and cutting these, these greens because we thought they were salad greens. <laughs> and then come home one day and he said, or uh, Jared, I'm sorry, uh, came home one day and he said, Mom, Emma, why are you guys cutting the tops out of my beads and we said oh I didn't realize that's what it was and he said yeah and he said if you take the tops out of them if you cut the leaves off of them they're not going to do anything so that's when I learned about beet greens they work good and then here's the little asparagus and I got to come and get all these weeds out but you can see they're they're doing they're doing pretty good they are and hopefully I'll get them, the gardens weeded out before the wet weather hits this evening. But my energy is um, still fairly limited. I'm doing better, much, much, much better. Here are the onions. They're doing very, very well. And Yeah, I just had him go ahead and, and weed eat these pathways because some of y'all had stated that you couldn't see what's going on in the garden for the, the high weeds. And it wasn't weeds, it's um, um, winter wheat 
but I understand that you are having a hard time seeing some of this. And yes, the garden is weedy, but uh, this garden is not everything I have going on in my life. But um, I keep it weeded enough so that the vegetables can flourish. I'm not into a better homes and garden um, better homes and garden garden but just one that's productive so you'll never see my gardens perfect this is celery need to get the weeds away from these little celeries so they don't get their light source taken away from them I don't think there is a celery there somewhere but I don't know where it's at that one may have gotten gone and then there's a celery, and there's a celery, and there's a celery, and there's a celery, and there's a celery. I'm kind of excited about these celeries. I want to see if they actually produce this year. It looks like they're trying. And this little bib lettuce needs eaten. That's some thorny ones right there. But uh, they're pretty. They're pretty. We need to have a lot of salads and sp using spinach and bib lettuce this week. I can see that right now. All right, and then our peas. We're getting some some flower buds on the peas, so they're getting ready to do something. Yay! Oh, look here, girls. I haven't been paying attention. Good gravy. I think I need to come down here with my scissors. We're having snap peas, or um, these are, what are they called? Sweet whatever peas for dinner tonight. I hadn't even been looking for the peas. I've been looking for the flowers. Well, hopefully there's enough. We'll just have a stir fry. All right, so ignore the weeds. They're what they are. And all the mess that Hugh threw into the garden while he was weed eating this morning. And here's some carrots. Looks like we are going to have some carrots. There again, I've got weeds growing up in them. This little garden I haven't cleaned out but once. So, but we got some nice sized carrots. And these are the little finger variety. And uh, should only be about maybe three inches tall at the most. And Hope he didn't get any of the, he didn't. Um, and they're chunky, they're, they're big around. So I'll come out and clean up, or I'll come out, I'm out here. Why do I keep saying I'm, I'm gonna come out? I'm gonna be out here and get this mess cleaned out. And then this is also a flower and I know you girls know what it is. I can't think of anything. I can't think of the name right now. I need to write these things down before I come out here so that I can, he cut some of them off with the weed eater. That's all right. He did a good job, bless his heart. And then whatever was over here were these little guys and I'm gonna leave them because they'll maybe bring in some little pollinators. Pollinators need some extra for this time of year. But what I'm doing now, Connie sent me a book and Corey and I have been sharing it it's called Carrots Love Tomatoes and thank you Connie I appreciate that very much and I, this morning I looked up because I'm where I cleaned up this one garden the other day I looked up to see if I could start setting tomatoes in there and it turns out tomatoes and broccoli do not like each other very well and cabbage and tomatoes do not like each other very well. So this garden bed, when I get it clean, it's going to have the, um, help me, sunflowers in it. And these two beds will have tomatoes in it. So that'll give it a little distance from the broccoli. But I'm just, I started on this one and I'm just gonna set the GoPro up so that you can see what I'm doing with my, my new tool. And hopefully, and I'm just going to do a little section because I'm not going to keep you guys here in the garden with me until sundown. 
I hope it stays nice. We've got a nice breeze going on. So, let me find a spot where you can see what I'm doing. All right, maybe that'll work. just got here with her doggies so these doggies over on this side of the house will bark for a little bit and I hope you guys can hear me from this distance all right let me see again if you're seeing what I'm what I'm doing now I've, I've cut the weeds down with my hoop hoe Aaron's channel, you'll remember that I did that entire garden up there this way last year and it worked just fine. We didn't have mounds, we just had dirt. Huge weeds. The hoopoe just doesn't like. The hoopoe is more intended for small. It's to keep a garden clean, not to clean a garden out. So it's uh, almost pointless in this application, but it'll work for right now. As long as I keep the weeds down when the veggies start coming on, we'll be good. Be fine. All right. Now this is my new tool. It's called a broad fork, and you just set it down in there. Stand up on it. Try not to fall. You see how hard this ground is. I'm not going to be able to get it to go real deep. And you just kind of lift. Then move it back a couple inches. Do the same thing. And I won't have to do this on the rest of the garden because he went ahead and plowed it. This red clay soil is a booger to grow in. But that's what we've got. That's one of the reasons that Aaron and I have decided that for next year, we're gonna start this winter building the culture raised beds. And then we can turn the, turn the soil into whatever type medium we want to grow in. If we want some beds that are gonna be specifically for, for carrots and sweet potatoes, we can add some sand and make that happen. And each bed can be amended for whatever's going in it for the next year. And I know that can happen too in a garden like this. But anyway, I'm surprised I haven't hit a big rock yet.
guess it's a good thing I weigh as much as I do, girls. <laughs> Hey guys, hush. All right, I'm almost to the end. I can say I'll probably do this whole garden in sections. I don't want to do tons of this at one time. But this bed and this bed are the only two that I should have to use this, or that it should be difficult to break up because these were mounded last fall and everything else has been um, has been uh, plowed fresh this spring. How many of you all have hard time um, doing more than one thing at a time. I know there's a name for that. But there again, my mind went blank. Believe it or not, I do think that the grounding is actually helping my memory. Not when I'm doing two things at once. Because <laughs> I've never been good at that. Multitasking. That's the word I'm looking for, girls. I've never been good at multitasking. All right, let me go get a tray of tomatoes and let's get these puppies started. I'm going to bring it up close so that I can hear you, <laughs> so that you can hear me. I don't think I can hear you. I'd love to. I'd love to be able to hear you guys. Hugh had a, or Aaron did, a live with Hugh recently. So... I'm wanting to do a live with you girls, just as girls. What do you think? All right, I shook you all over the place. I'm sorry. Let's get these guys out of here. And I'm going to set them probably about 18 inches between, but only about 12 inches down the row. And I think that will give plenty of space. Oh, man. This intensely hard soil. You know what I need? Maybe I might invest in one of those drilling tools. They look interesting. Have y'all seen those? For you gardeners out there? It looks like a very worthwhile investment. And I think that's going to be something that I'm going to look into very soon. All right, now with tomatoes, for any of you that are not gardeners, let me let me show you what I do. I'm going to plant this thing about that deep where my thumb's at. And the reason for that is because all of these little hairs will actually turn into roots. And that will give it an amazing, amazing root system that will not turn over in a storm. Of course, now we do stake them because I want to make sure. And just go ahead and clip off the two bottom leaves. They don't need to be under the ground. And I could bring some brown cow down there, some black cow down here and put in. But I'm going to leave them a little concave for a minute because this afternoon I'll come and water them in, or in a little while I'll come water them in and go ahead and give them a drink of fertilizer because it's been 
a week since I fertilized. All right, there's one. Let's put this other one up here. Oh, that's more crumbly. Much, much better. Much, much better. All right. Hmm. Not as deep as I wanted, but that little guy is so tiny. I'll just go that with him. All right. I bet I'm red as a beet. I get really, really red when I'm hot. <laughs> My daddy did too. Bless his heart. All right. Uh, about 12, maybe, maybe somewhere closer to 16 inches going down this way. Can you only even see what I'm doing? No, I've got you too close. Maybe so. But the truth is, when you're um, when you're planting, especially in soil that's this this tight, you have to aerate it. There you go. Works. because plants plants need to be able to breathe they need sunlight they need water and they need oxygen and all these soil microbes that hopefully are down in here will help and I haven't run across an earthworm yet that's why we've got to redo this whole field girls this field is uh, depleted from years and years and years of tobacco growing and it's got to come back to a place of health. Our gardens will struggle until then, but they'll produce. I use a, a fertilizer called, well actually I don't use the Neptunes promise any longer because it's so expensive but I'm using one that's the equivalent of that and it's about half the price oh found a worm hey dude go back down in there and talk to my tomato bust all these clods up before I put them back in I'll get this one tray in and then I'll go get some water because it's pretty hot out here and I really don't want it to I don't want them to struggle the soils damp that they're in but they are not and this is a little bitty guy but I'm still gonna put him in the ground he'll do fine him so deep because I can actually plant him up to his just to his little leaves and he would be fine oops see those crazy clots now this can this is gonna take a while I haven't I haven't grown a garden in dirt this poor in years we had a lovely garden in uh, Canton and last year and here I am on it I'm packing it back down last year we grew the garden up above that little barn uh, 
and that soil up there is rocky but it's nice and loose and that's where Hugh is growing the potatoes let me see am I pointing you toward anything there we go Hugh is growing the potatoes and the beans and the corn so and this is the area down here that I'm wanting to turn into a market garden eventually as we can yeah I can see that this evening on Amazon I am going to order that crazy little screwdriver <laughs> that crazy little screw thing that will drill these holes for me that's just all there is to it that will be a good investment but anyway if it weren't going to rain tonight I probably wouldn't even finish this simply because this is ridiculous but better days coming if you guys stick with me for a few years <laughs> you'll see the the results hopefully of, of turning this garden into something fabulous and usable I think I hear pop somewhere I don't know where since we're down in a little kind of a, a bowl everything echoes I think I could have even started this if it hadn't have been for that little broad fork. I think it helped loosen it up a pretty good bit. So that was a good investment. Now I do want to I do want to point you all those of you that live in um, in a community where you don't have maybe well those of you that don't have a big backyard and but you want to garden and your yard is maybe completely um, covered in grass currently. Hope, hope you can see what I'm doing. I don't know. If it is, I want to encourage you to watch a, a man named Charles Dowding, D-O-W-D-I-N-G. He is a no-till grower from the UK. Nice, nice man. But he teaches how to start a garden when your garden when your your soil is covered with grass or weeds or whatever by starting with a layer you cut it down as as close as you possibly can to begin with and then um, you put down cardboard and the cardboard you have to use just a very very plain cardboard because you, you can't use the cardboard that's covered with a lot of ink or cardboard that's covered with a lot of um, of the waxy stuff it has to be just the plain plain cardboard and then you're gonna go to your local community um, and and this is where it gets pricey for the first year but it, after that it's not but if you know someone where you can get compost um, you go and get enough compost to do about six inches of compost eight inches of compost on top wet it down good or wet the card I always wet the cardboard down good <clears throat> so that it can actually just lay against the ground and that's your weed barrier so you're going to get rid of all those weeds that's underneath by doing that and give yourself a wonderful start growing now and the compost that you're going to get is the compost that's specifically ready for gardening they we used to the, across the road when we first moved over here in 2018 i made several of those gardens and they were rich and they were beautiful and they were so easy to care for um and the garden the, the compost that i that i bought was compost that was um specifically for growing so girls i hope that i'm seeing that you're seeing something that i'm doing here i don't want this just to be me talking but 
anyway and so you could you could start it wouldn't be horribly pricey to start a little garden like that and uh, of course those of you that have family members or you yourself are good at carpentry if you can find somebody that has scrap wood laying around pallets whatever that I've seen um, I have seen raised beds built out of pallets and that's doable and yeah in years to come you might have to what he calls scab over you know where the wood might start to rot you might have to put another piece of wood over top of it but most of the time they're going to last for a good while and you can take like chicken wire or landscape fabric and line the inside of it so that your dirt is secure and not falling out um, and that's a that's a doable garden those of you that just absolutely do not have anywhere to have something like that but want to garden um, I would encourage you to consider containment or container gardens because you can you can grow a whole lot in pots you know you have to adjust your pots to the the size of the vegetable that you're growing in it um, I've grown tomatoes on my porch in Canton peppers my mother lived with us for 14 years and she was an avid gardener the last five years or so of her life she was not able to garden or to get out in her garden safely so on our front porch Hugh built um, a railing that had like three levels that would hold hold pots you know you'd have a, a a surface that would jut out this way that would hold a pot and then on the other side a surface that would jut out that way and hold a pot and since there were three levels you just they were staggered up and down and up and down if I can find a photograph of that at some point I'll show you girls because it was it was beautiful it was absolutely gorgeous and it was my mom had the ability to reach all of her plants even when she was in her wheelchair she could ride around and deadhead her petunias and uh, you know water her whatever whatever and uh, it was so pretty that she had people we lived on a fairly busy little street not horribly busy but people would stop and uh, just chat with her and roll their windows down and say I admire your your flowers so much I just love riding by here every day <laughs> and my mother absolutely loved that she loved that interaction with people and the fact that people were enjoying her her flowers made her very very happy and so that was a, a very doable way to have a little flower garden a little vegetable garden she had both and, and it didn't take up you know extra space it's just if you have a, a porch that you know at least gets the sun sunshine six hours a day you can do that I don't know girls it just it hurts my heart for some of y'all that that have always loved gardening and now you find that you don't have the place to get out and garden I just think a gardener should be gardening always so anyway there comes pops let's see what he's up to what you up to pops buried, so. uh oh he's buried the potatoes oh no does that mean they're dead or that they're no it means they, they're, they've got plenty of room to make taters okay <laughs> you want me to help you put these out yeah if you want to if you don't I don't... Holes. okay that's yeah you're well, putting them a little close together but yeah well i'm leaving leaving plenty of space in between but all right girls well pops is going to come and join me and help with the, this venture and I've been gone, I mean, I've been on here about 35 minutes, so I'm going to sign off.
and I bet I'm hot and red. I know I'm hot. I bet I'm red. All right. I love y'all. You have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.